There must be some process for this power. Let us see what it is. The control over methods of production and analysis places an individual in the position of influencing how inputs are transformed into outputs. I will ask the expert to explain what it is. This is akin to respect because the power is used or it is given to the manager by the company, but respect is commanded. A person commands respect because of his expertise. And if he is in manufacturing process, a manager, if he knows the whole process mm -hmm. and can sometimes also help the workers or teach the workers, this is something that impresses them. All right. Similarly, if there is a senior accountant mm -hmm. and the junior accountants uh, get help from him on education too in a way and they learn or in software if there is an expert hmm. and other people learn the use of software from him that is what impresses them all mm -hmm. and that makes them respect that person researchers have proved that the best power is the process power or the expert power which also has a great element of respect so this is what we mean by process power and with this we come to the information power which basically means the access to and or control of information may complement legitimate hierarchical power may be granted to specialists and managers in the middle of information system sir further explain please now, this is an era of information technology and most of the times the people who have information, they impress others. Mm -hmm. But particularly the managers who have more information than others, they have a certain sort of power or influence over uh, the workers. and. Uh, uh, this is what also makes them more effective because those who have more information they are more helpful in decision making and they are more helpful in policy making shall we say sir that they have an upper hand over their employers then uh, we can say they have an upper hand but actually they have an edge over others right. even other managers who are uh, not given access to that information. Right. Basically, it's the access provided to some managers by the higher management to certain critical information and therefore they are more helpful and they are more informative on certain matters and that naturally gives them power over others. So the, that is why whenever we read advertisements even for job of managers, it is required that you should have a computer literacy knowledge. Yes, information technology has great influence now and computer literacy is something normal. But those who are expert in using computers and those who can use databases or make them interactive, they are naturally more respected and they are considered to be more effective in their day-to-day -day management. Sir, I believe that is why they are more in demand also these days. Now let us move to the legitimate power also known as formal hierarchical authority. The extent to which a manager can use subordinates internalized values or beliefs that the boss has a right of command to control their behavior. Explanation is a little bit uh, uh, interesting to understand because it is not only the authority that makes people obey mm -hmm. authority, it is actually the voluntary uh, subordination and uh, people's will mm -hmm. to obey certain managers or certain people All who right. are in a position of authority. Mm -hmm which means that it is not all the time coercion. Actually, authority is conceded by the people 
who are uh, working uh, under a certain person, mm -hmm. they, in a way, we can say they, they allow him to be their uh, leader or manager and therefore they obey his commands. So although this position is according to the position given to the manager in the hierarchy of administration, mm -hmm. but this position he uses to uh, his benefit and to the benefit of the organization, All right. actually to the benefit of production. Mm -hmm. But that is how much he uses it and how much people allow him to use it. All right. That is the point. Another very interesting aspect of power is referent power. Referent power, whereas, is the ability to control another's behavior because the person wants to identify with the power source. It can be enhanced by linking to morality and ethics and long-term vision. The expert will further explain it. You can see it's something that applies more to leaders than to managers because this power is gained through certain attitudes or actions of a person and thus people start respecting him, loving him, following him and he becomes a leader. There may be some managers who are also leaders but referent power is actually the power which a person commands in the form of respect because he, uh, the people want to uh, identify themselves with him either because of his patriotism mm -hmm. or his uh, being uh, an excellent artist mm -hmm. or being uh, uh, an orator or maybe due to any other traits but this power is something which people give to a person mm -hmm. and they voluntarily want to follow him so this is the willfulness of the followers that gives influence to a certain leader or sometimes maybe to a manager. Sir, but the question remains there that basically what is the process of acquiring power? Now, acquiring and using power, a considerable portion of any manager's time is directed towards power-oriented behavior Power-oriented behavior is action-directed at developing or using relationships in which other people are willing to defer wholly or partially to one's wishes. Now, what does this uh, slide tell us? It tells that power is not a one-way affair. It's not the procedures or the in-house manual that gives power to a manager, he has the power or she because they can use the power mm -hmm. and they can use the power for the benefit of the company and for uh, achieving objectives mm -hmm. and also for the collective benefit of workers. Right. So this process of acquiring power is a mixed one. Mm -hmm. It has all those powers that we have studied, but acquiring a power mostly is due to the use of power according to the position a person is given. Mm -hmm. And this use depends upon him, to what extent and with what intensity he or she uses this power. That is what uh, the way he or she acquires the power. Viewers, there are three dimensions of managerial power and influence, which are downward, upward, and lateral. Effective managers build and maintain position power and personal power to exercise downward, upward, and lateral influence. Here we can see that power is acquired and used in different ways, mm -hmm. and the most popular we can say is making teams and groups or 
linking people together and thus making a group of people who follows a leader or a manager and managers to manage well because of certain groups and teams who are linked upward and downward and lateral also. That is, these are the ways through which one elicits cooperation and jointly people then strive for collective good and the success of the business in which they are working. So this is spread of the power, use of the power that has been acquired due to the position. And now coming to the last thing that is to be studied under today's topic, it is the building position power by increasing centrality and criticality in the organization, increasing task relevance of own activities and work units activities, and attempting to define tasks so they are difficult to evaluate. Am I right, expert? Yes, you are. Because power is acquired, but then it has to be used and the manager has to make himself or herself the focus. And uh, this he or she can do only when the central and critical tasks are uh, on which the use of power is focused. And secondly, he has to create a relevance of tasks so that people feel that they are being productive and they are performing useful activities. And if they can relate to the activities, they can relate to the manager and that makes everything, all activities relevant. Now these things may be difficult to define, but since these are the basics of uh, use of power, mm -hmm. and uh, they are also in a way uh, giving the role of a leader to the manager, and a successful manager is one who is also partly leader, and who does not have power only because of his position, but he can uh, relate the tasks and he can be central to the tasks and he can be uh, relevant to everybody in the factory or in the business wherever he is managing affairs. And with this, we also come to the end of today's topic, which is uh, power and politics. I would want to give an overview of what we studied today. What is power? Reward power? Coercive power? Legitimate power? Process power, information power, referent power, power and leadership, using power and building position power. Viewers, thank you so much for watching today's episode. I hope that we have helped you study and learn organization and management. Thank you, expert. Thank you. Allah Hafiz, we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.